Okay, so this is actually release 1.19, and most of this, like Keith said, has been focused on the packages and the add-ons. So I'm gonna focus on that. We do have a few other things that I'll try to touch on in the end, but I'm gonna focus on the packages and the add-ons. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go into an existing job, and this is the one we actually did last Friday in a demonstration. And I'm gonna show how some of these packages look and some of the new things and how they look in a job, and then I'll go into the distributor side administrative setup and uh, show you how I set those things up. So like Keith was mentioning, everything you see here in the 3D model will be picked up on the material list. So the wall and the roof steel, all the trim, the doors and windows, and if I switch over to my frame view, all the framing that's in here now, the posts, um, the trusses, all of this stuff is automatically picked up in my material list and priced according to um, the price, the cost and the price that I have in my material database. And these get defined with our framing rules. So um, for like the skirt board, I have a pressure treated two by six material and that's what's showing up here. Um, so for the 3D model, what you see is what you get, and these do show up on the material list. There are quite a few things that we don't show in the 3D model, and they're not automatically coming in uh, through the program. That's when we use these packages and the add-ons, and these can be configured by you. So things like right now screws, nails, those kind of things we don't show in the model. Uh, things like interior aligner, things like delivery fees as well, uh, labor costs, all those kind of things we can do with these packages and add-ons. And we have a couple different types that we can use. And one we call base, base macros or base add-ons. That means that these will automatically come in. So this, for every job that I do, I want certain materials to come into the job. And so once we get into the administrative side, you'll see how I set these up. But right now for this job, here's all my, of my base macros. So these are the things that I set up to come in automatically, um, like the screws, I have some weather stripping, um, some roll flashing, I have some labor that comes in based off of um, square footage and based off of number of windows. We'll get into these a little bit, get into some more detail. So these automatically came in. Um, I have some other ones that I have come in on the framing tab. I have some corner bracing that I have coming in. Um, I have one of these 20 foot two by fours for every corner post. So we'll get into that in a little bit and look at those. The other type of add-ons that we can use are what we should call plain add-ons. And these are things that need to be optional. So for example, I have insulation roof, uh, insulation wall, and some other ones, but if we look at like this insulation roof, right now this is turned off. When I turn this one on, check it on, the program goes and it looks at my packages, it looks at the calculation I'm using, and we'll get into the details of that. Um, and it is telling me that I need 24 rolls of this uh, double bubble roof insulation. And I'll show you how this all gets set up. Um, so that's just for the wall. We could turn on the roof as well, but you know, we'll just say for this example, we just want the wall. You could combine these together and just have a single insulation if you always do roof and wall together. I broke these out. Sometimes you may just want the roof um, and probably sometimes you want roof and wall. So one of the things that we have done now that is new is for insulation wall, this is a general category. And then here in this drop down, I have all the different types of the wall insulation that we could use. So this list could go on, and I'll show you how this gets set up. But right now I have this double bubble, but if we change it to this cheating type product that I have set up, then the program goes and it looks at that 
product. It looks at the calculation I'm using. And this is calculated the way I set this up. I now have a quantity of 94 of these four by eight wall sheets. And this is, of course, adding to our total price of the job, which is up here. And if you do hit, if you hold down control and you double click, then we can expose the costs and the price. So we can see I have a cost is 3130 for each of these four by eight wall sheets that's in my material database. It's calculated I need 94 of these and it calculated a price. So if I switch this back to the double bubble, we'll see that it's gonna go look at my other calculation and so I have a different price for this. And so you can set these up to where you can define these different packages that will then be part of this drop down with these different products. And so another example here, I have a delivery fee that I have set up. And if I turn this one on, I have zone one and zone two. You could have obviously as many of these zones as you want. And I'll show you how I set this up, um, the background of it. But the way I have this set up right now is when I turn this on, it's asking me a question of how many of these deliveries uh, are gonna be involved here. We probably could come up with a calculation to uh, calculate you know, the number of deliveries, if you could uh, do it based on like the square footage. I've chosen here, just I'm gonna put in how many deliveries I think I need. So if I say three here and I say okay, then it's going to calculate this delivery fee. So I have a zone one fee. And so I put in a, a cost of $100 for zone one. And I put in, I'm going to need three of these deliveries. And so it's calculated as $300. I'm going to come over here and unmute everybody. Interesting noises. OK. So in this case, it asked me the question, how many of these do you want? And I said three. I put in a price for delivery zone one of $100. And when I have three of those, it calculates $300. Um, another example that I have here is this driveway. So when I click on this one, again, I have some questions. And so these questions I actually created, and I'll show you how to do these. This is another new part of the packages. I put in some defaults, so I have a four inch thickness, um, but we could define the width and the length of this. And when I say okay here, I have a calculation in the background that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And it is looking at those different parameters, the width, the length, and the thickness. And the way I have this set up is I'm figuring out the cubic yardage required based on those inputs. And I have a cost per cubic yard or a price of $200. And the way I have this set up is like, this is kind of a subcontractor price where they say, per cubic yard, I'm gonna charge you $200. And so based on that, and based on those parameters I put in, it figured eight cubic yards of concrete, which I think sounds correct. And one of the things you can do is you can come in and double check these. You know, you can open up a job and you can put in some different parameters and make sure these are correct. Um, and so now for this 200 cubic yard price, it's multiplying that by this eight, the quantity of eight, and I'm getting $1,600 of uh, this is, labor and they're including everything with that. So one example of how you could do that, there's a lot of different ways that we could set this up. And I'm gonna go in now and show you the details of how I got some of these set up. I just wanted to start here in the job to see how these look in the job and how these work. And now I'll go into the actual setup of some of these. So I'm gonna save this job. So all those packages and add-ons I turned on are now part of this job. They save with the job, they're part of the total price and the quote. So now for the setup of this, we go to the distributor menu and we go to packages. And so this is the interface that we use to set up all these different packages. So 
you will see reflected here all the things all those things we were just looking at in the job are here on this list and actually before i get into how we set these up i'm going to go to the materials because this is really the first step in the process and this is important um, to understand for this this material database is what we are using to do any of our calculations and this framing and the sheathing the trim all of these parts are shown in the 3d model um, and these do automatically come in based on the framing rules you can also use these materials like you can use any sort of a 2 by 10 or 2 by 4 material in a package and i'll show you that in a little bit all these other categories down here these are pretty much open because they're not shown in 3d model these are things that you define you can choose which of these categories they go in um, and there's more flexibility here you don't have to have a specific skew with these framing and the sheathing because the program is automatically picking these up we kind of have a special skew that you have to use that the program recognizes. These other pieces right now, you don't have to have a skew. Um, so the first step is setting up these materials in a way that makes sense for how you're going to use them. So for example, if we look at some of these, I have this a ridge cap closure, 20 foot length. Um, I also have a 100 foot length this is a different product. I have some of my roof screws in here Here's this double roof insulation. Um, if I go over to my labor category, we can see here's this delivery fee zone one, uh, zone two. I have a cupola labor that I put in. I, I combine the frame and the steel, um, interior steel labor. And this is a two part process. So we have materials. There's also a pricing that I'll show you in a second. But if you need to add something, into your material database in any of these categories besides the framing the sheathing and the trim you can just come in here and you can use this add button you have to be really careful to select the right category but let's just say we're putting in this labor category and i'll just put in an example here and in this case these really don't matter there's no dimensions involved here but i'm just going to put in in zeros there so now I just added this into my labor here's the example here so that's the first step but then you also need to set up your pricing so when I go into the pricing at this point we'll see here's the example I just set up it comes in with this kind of absurd price but you can come in here and we can change this and this is where you will do a markup and a margin and It'll calculate this markup for you. Um, it's not automatically doing it right now. You can do this with the download, which I'll show you in just a second. But so here you'll notice I put in this $100 fee for delivery one, zone one. I have $150 for zone two. Um, I have this frame and steel labor. And the way I have this set up is I'm doing this by square foot. So this is an important point here is that when I make my calculations, I'm going to be figuring basically per square footage of the building, what is my labor gonna be? And I'm putting in this cost and price based on square foot. So this is $10 per square foot is just what I have in here. This would obviously be what you want this to be. Um, but I have some other types where like for the overhead door, labor, I have a price per overhead door. So you'll see once we get into the calculations, um, when I figure the labor for uh, just the basic frame and the steel of the building, I'm doing it by square footage. When we, I'm figuring some labor based off overhead doors as well, and I'm doing that per overhead door. You can also do per square footage of overhead door. I'll get into some of the calculations that you can use, but the important point here is when you're setting up these costs and the price in your material database, well, A, you have to have this product in your database in order to use it. B, these prices need to make sense uh, for how you want to be calculating your material takeoffs and calculating your labor. Um, trying to think if I have some other examples here that would make sense. So here are these this wall sheathing for the insulation that we looked at, and I have that priced per sheet. 
I have this double bubble insulation, 125 foot, priced for an entire roll. Um, let's see. I thought I had some other examples. You could potentially price this as lineal footage. So the way I'm doing these right now, I'm having the program figure out how many of these 20 foot rolls I need. I'm also having it figure out how many of this 100 foot ridge closure do I need. You could price these as lineal footage instead. So I could divide this by 100 and get a lineal footage cost and price and put that in here as my material uh, price. And then I could have my calculation be figuring lineal footage. And instead of getting how many rolls I need, I could get how many lineal footage I need. And it's gonna give me a price per lineal foot and I'm gonna get a report of lineal foot and then I can decide, okay, I'm gonna send out one of these 100 foot rolls, but we also have this other one that was left over. It still has 50, I'm gonna send that one. So you can set this up in some different ways. Another example, like I have my roof screws priced per screw and I'm getting a count of roof screws and then I'm figuring out how many I wanna send out. But you could price these per pound as well and then your calculations will reflect that. So that's a very important piece. Um, you have to get the material set up and you have to get the cost and the price set up. You can do that individually like I showed. We also have this download and so you can do this using a CSV format. And so I'll just quickly show you this. So I just downloaded my, my pricing inventory. But if you download this, it'll give you the proper format and you can come into like an Excel file and you can also add things in here. Um, you know, we could add some additional items. You have to make sure you have the right categories, but you can put in your cost and price. This is where you can also do things like you could put in a margin percentage and base your price off of a margin percentage. So I don't wanna to get too detailed into this. We could help you with this, but you can use all these Excel kind of things um, to get your materials into the system as well. And once you get that set up, there's this upload feature. You can go and you can choose a file and upload it. As long as it's formatted properly, it will update your material database and the pricing based off of what you put in there. So that's an important piece that has to be set up properly for any of this to work. So now I'm gonna get into the packages and how we actually set these up. So the first thing that I'm gonna look at is how we got these uh, drop downs to work. Once when we were in the job, we saw we had both the, um, we did the wall, we had the double bubble and the sheeting. And so the way that you set these up is you call something a group name. And so you'll notice this one I put is insulation wall. And so if I add a new one, so if we're gonna add a new one, you come here to add new and you can hit blank. If I type in, if I start to type in insulation, it's going to see the categories I've already done. So we could add in another insulation wall package and we could um, call this, you know, maybe it's like a vinyl product of some sort and we could go into our catalog and I'll show you more how this works in a second, but really the point here is this is how you would create another group under insulation of wall. And you can move these around. So there's these uh, arrows here. So you can move any of these around and they'll come in down at the bottom, but then you can put them where you want. So now we have another category here. So when we go into a job, we'll see that we have a vinyl as another option to select underneath insulation wall. So to get those groups set up, you just give them the same name. So this insulation roof and this insulation roof are going to be the one grouping category. And then our options are gonna be this double bubble. And I have this as reflective. So those will be the two options that we can choose as our uh, different insulation products that we can use. So this bold text here is the group and then this double bubble is the name of the package. And then anything you put in here is what's going to be included when you select uh, double bubble versus reflective. So I have some other examples here where I have ridge cap closure and here's this closure we looked at in my database. And in terms of the groups, 
I have uh, just a basic closure, and then I also have a separate one for venting closure. I'm trying. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a mute all. So that's how you get those into groups. Now the other thing that I wanted to look at is like how do we actually set up these calculations? So I'm gonna go into this driveway one as an example and show you how I set this up. So to add anything to any of these packages, you can add one thing or you can add a hundred things into a single package. So I have this driveway package. I don't really want this in a group. It's a standalone, so I didn't do any group name. I called it driveway. This is an add-on versus a base macro, which will come in automatically, and I'll show you that in a sec. But in order to add anything, you would go into add catalog. And you can choose which of those tabs in a job it shows up in. And I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Um, you can give this a name. You can go into those different categories. Here's our different hardwares. Um, so you select a category, and then from that category, you'll have a subset, and it'll be the things available underneath that category. Uh, this one I've already put in. So in this one, I'm going to hit edit, and we can see how I did this. So putting this in the accessories tab, I called this driveway cubic yard. I went into my labor category, and underneath there, I have something called sub concrete labor. You can probably give these better names or things that make sense to you. So this is my subcontractor concrete labor price that I'm just getting per cubic yard. Um, and now we can look at this calculation that I put in. And I think I can expand this a little bit, yeah. So I'm gonna take a quick picture of this just to make sure I kind of remember this. Um, yeah, and actually I'm gonna go back here and edit. I'm going to delete this and show you how I set this up real quick. So this is one that we had set up uh, with some questions. And so when I hit this question button, it pops up this interface here. And this is where I put in thickness. And I specified this is going to be in inches. And you can set up a default. And you say OK. So now this is building the calculation here that the computer is going to understand. And it's saying, it's gonna ask about the thickness. It's gonna be in inches and the default right now is four. I'm going to divide this by 12 because I'm gonna get everything in the feet here to convert it to cubic yards. So I can take that calculation um, or this thickness that gets put in and using the slash kind of like Excel, I can say, I want to divide that by 12. And I'm using these um, parentheses, kind of like algebra here, to isolate that. But now I'm going to multiply this by something else. And this is where I put in the width and put in feet. This is where I did my default of 10. So I can say, OK, here. And we're also going to multiply this one by another question that is going to be length and this is also going to be foot and I'm put in a default of 10 and now because I'm using cubic footage I think we need to divide this whole thing by 27 to compute it, convert it to cubic footage I think that's the correct calculation there so yeah, the point is so now this is that calculation that we saw before. So when I turned this uh, this package on, it asked me, what's your thickness? It had a default of four. What's your width? A default of 10. Uh, what's your length? A default of 10. But I could change those. But it still did these calculations where whatever I put in here for the thickness, it changes from four to six. It's going to divide that by 12. And then whatever this calculation comes out to be, it's going to divide that by 27 to get the cubic yards. And it is going to round up to the nearest cubic yard. So once I get this all in there, I hit save. And so now you can see over here, you can take a look at the calculation. 
in this way as well. So that's how I got those questions. So we have the categories that you can set up and we have these different questions that you can put in. So that demonstrates how to do those questions. Um, so now I'll show you a little bit more how I did some of these. So for like this installation for the roof, if I edit this one, we can see how I set this up. Um, looks like I didn't put in a usage chair, but we'll say insulation. And I had this insulation in my hardware category. So here's the SKU I used, here's the material, here's that price that I put in. And we'll see here that the way I'm figuring this is I'm doing it per square foot. And it's uh, actually, I guess this one might not be quite right uh, because this is actually going to be a square footage number. So I divided this one divided by 125. And actually, I think this is a four, four uh, foot wide by 125. And so really what I think I would want to do here is for, so for one of these 125 foot long uh, rolls of this, it's going to cover 500 square feet. And so what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out, okay, so per square foot, how much is being used of this roll? So I'm doing one divided by 500 to find out for each square foot how much of a roll is being used. And then I'm multiplying it by the square foot of roof in this case. And the way that I got this roof is, so the questions come over here, but for all these calc, what we call calc bases, and these are, you can use any of these in your calculations to figure things. And so you can go down this list and find the one you want. And in this case, I want the square foot of roof sheeting. And so, what I'm doing here, I'm finding out for every square foot, how much of this roll am I gonna use? And then I'm multiplying that by the square foot of the roof sheeting. And what that's gonna figure out for me is when am I going to um, need more than one roll, need two rolls? So if I have 500 square foot, actually if I have 499 square foot or less, it's gonna give me one roll. If I have 500 to uh, 999, it's gonna figure two rolls. And so that's when I turned that on, that's how it's figuring it. It's using this calculation that I set up. So I would hit save here, and now it's gonna figure that calculation uh, for this particular add-on. And so you can do that with um, a lot of different types of packages here. So all these with the checkboxes are add-ons, and that means these are the ones that they're optional that I can turn off and on. These guys that I have down here, these are what we call the base macro. So that's the type versus add-on versus a base macro. These base macros will automatically come in. Um, so I have this flashing, and for this, I set up some different examples of how I could do this flashing. I have a roll that's 33 foot long, um, this particular calculation, I'm using the lineal foot of window and I'm just figuring, um, again, for every one foot lineal foot of window, how much is it going to use of this 33 foot roll? And that actually comes out to this decimal number. This is the same thing as doing one divided by 33. So when I multiply lineal foot times this number here, it is basically figuring out how much of this um, per lineal foot, how much of this 33 foot roll is being used. And again, if I have like 32 foot, I'm gonna get one. If I have 33, 34, 35, I'm gonna get two of these. And it's gonna round that up. Here's an example where I only wanted to use it on half the window. So you can play some games here where I, this, I divided one divided by half of 33 and I came out with this number. So this is gonna give me less. Um, this one is gonna give me slightly more. Uh, here's an example where I put in a factor, like a 10% factor. So what I did here is I multiplied the lineal footage of window times 0.1, which basically gives me 10% of the lineal footage of window. Then I added that back to the original lineal footage of window 
and then I multiplied it by this um, number that gives me the 33 foot. So in this case, you know, I'm getting 10% of the lineal footage. I'm adding the lineal footage back. This is just a way that you can get like a 10% waste factor into this into this equation. Um, for these roof screws, I'd have these priced as individual screws. The way I'm doing this is multiplying a factor here by the square footage of roof. So I'm getting 1.4 screws for every square foot of roof. So when I turn this one on in a job, it's going to multiply this out. It's going to give me a count, and then I'm going to figure out how to do it. Um, you can set it up in different ways. I, like I have some different factors that I'm using here for like the nails. Um, I don't want to get too deeply into how I do this or how you, and you can, you know, you can figure out how you want to do these calculations. And I, we do have some documentation. I'm working on some documentation that's going to update for some of these new changes. Um, but, you know, using your materials, the way you're pricing them, using some different factors and different calculations, you can, um, you know, calculate these things in a lot of different ways. So this is where the work comes in on your part. You'll have to figure out how you can apply these things to how, how you do things. Um, and... Yeah, I guess the one other thing that I wanted to look at specifically here, um, like here's an example of interior liners. So I have this as just something that you can turn on. Right now, we don't automate interior liners in the program. It's not part of the 3D model. You have to use the package. Eventually, we are going to get these liners to come in automatically. But here's an example of interior liners where I have multiple different products and I have these going to different places on my material list, these different categories. So I have my framing pieces that I'm using a factor based on the lineal footage of base trim or the base and multiplying that by a factor. Um, for some of this trim, I'm using the eave edge and the gable edge. Uh, the sheathing I'm using the square footage, multiplying that by a factor. Um, I included labor here. So I have some labor, and this is how I have this price just based on square footage. So for this example, I have a price that I just figured out for labor based on the square footage of the main building. So the only factor I'm using here is just square footage, and it's going to multiply that out. So I think it was like $10 or something that I had. This is going to multiply $10 by this every square for every square foot. Um, I set this up for the labor for each window. I have it, I think it's like $150 or something. It's going to give me $150 for every window that's in there, some additional interior labor. So you could separate out this labor. It could be its own package. Um, I included it here is just kind of this entire package is the interior liner with labor. Um, so I have some exterior labor that I'm having automatically come in. So this is the outside of the building. Um, so this interior is an option that I can turn on and on because it's um, an add-on. But this one here I have is the base macro. So this is automatically coming in. And so I have this uh, frame and steel labor again that I'm just doing by square footage. And in this case, I'm adding these up. So I did the square footage of the main square foot of open building and square foot of enclosed building. So if I have like a lean-to or an open, po open porch that's being added, or even a gable uh, building, inline or T building, any of those additional buildings, it's adding up all that square footage. And so in this case, I'm adding up all the square footage there and I'm getting $10 per square foot. In addition though, I have some additional labor per window again and per walk door, per overhead door. We could have sliders in here too. And we'll look at the all these different factors and that you can use in a second. Um, I have some post labor that I have set up uh, per post, like a cost per post. I have cupola labor uh, per cupola. So when I go into a job, if I add one cupola, it's going to give me uh, this labor one for one cupola. If I have two, it's going to give me two cupolas, um, and et cetera. So again, it's important how you set these up. This is something that I put in my material database. I have a specific 
material underneath my labor category for the walk door labor. And I have a price there per door. And then per job, it's gonna count up how many of these walk doors I have, and it's gonna multiply that out. But th there's different ways that you could set this up. As you can imagine, there's a lot of different types of calculations that we can do. So, I have a lot of different types of um, packages in here, and I don't know how much we want to get into all of these. You know, here's one that I have for corner bracing. I designated a two by four 20 foot length, and I'm doing two of these for every corner post. So, this is a good time to get into some of these additional new calculations that we have. We, before, we just had number of posts, we still have number of posts. Now we break out the posts and the different types of posts. So we have corner posts. So I'm getting two of these two by four 20 footers for every corner post in a job. So this is one that's automatically coming in. It's gonna calculate this um, automatically when I uh, start a new job based on how many corner posts there are. And one way that we can look at these is to go in here. So when I'm building these calculations, again, here's a list of all the different types of these calc bases or calculations that you can do based on the model data or the data of the job. And so there's a long list here. A lot of these are new. I guess I'm gonna pull up this. These are the new ones that we have. So we now have uh, the main building width and length and ceiling height separated out. So you could use this to calculate uh, the square footage, you could use this to calculate the area if you wanted. All of these things here can be used in any sort of calculations, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Um, we broke out the trusses into common truss versus gable versus mono, mono gable. Uh, we now have a number of rafters, hip rafters, purlins, flush purlins, number of girts, commercial girts, uh, number of cupolas are used on that labor um, calculation, but you could use that in other ways. Here's where we broke out the post versus like an open porch post. Um, this is what you can use for like the Y bracing or V bracing. We don't automatically put that in the model yet, but you could, um, you know, have a product in your material database. Maybe it's a three foot long uh, product that you could then calculate out on the number of open posts. And you could have one for just like a uh, V brace, one for a Y brace potentially. Uh, we'd have to maybe look at that, think about how you'd want to set that up. Um, the number of sidewall posts versus the number of gable posts and the number of corner posts. Uh, we have like a number of walk doors, but now you can do square footage of walk door as well, square footage of overhead door to help account for like the size of that door if you need to. Square footage slider, square foot of window, and then we have some of these a lineal footage of the perimeter of the building, of just the main building. Um, you can do the enclo any enclosed, separate that out, open, and you can also use a lineal foot of stem wall. So these are the new ones that we've just put in. These are all new. And so these are in addition to all the ones that we had before, um, which you can see in here, number of walk doors. So this is like a complete list. And one thing that you can do, which I think, a just found out is it doesn't appear to be working quite right. You can add, so you can add a new calc base. To do a brand new one, you can use a blank. You can also, we do have what we call canned packages, and these are ones that we have set up that you can just use. So if you select this one, it's gonna add it to the list. It just added it down here to the list and it has some information already set up, but you could come in here, you could add a group, you can you know, change this to whatever you want. You could come in and edit all of these calculations and do different things here. So you can add a blank brand new one, or you can use these uh, canned packages, we call them. We're going to be updating these and doing some new ones. We'll continue to update these, and hopefully early next week, we're gonna have a better list of these. So keep, uh, keep a lookout for those. You can add those and start with those as a base and then add to them. Or you can start, or you can add a calc, this calc base. And really what this calc base is, is it just gives you a list of all the different things that are available. 
And so that's one way you can look at it. You can also, and this can be in a job. So you could um, use this as something where you just want to get some information about the model data without even doing any calculations. It's just going to report here, you know, the building, the main building width. It's going to report the square foot of floor, all these things. So when you turn this calc basis, calc base on, it's going to list these out per job. And so you can get information about the model just for your own information or to make some decisions. And you can come in here and you can delete some of these out as well. So you can customize this list of stuff that you just want to see and use for your reference. And you can give this a name, you know, whatever you want. Um, and when you save this, and there's one thing to be very careful of here is to save these uh, any changes you make to the calc or the packages. If you just um, hit cancel or if you do leave and go somewhere else, it'll give you a warning kind of to leave. It's pretty easy just to click through there and you won't get your changes saved. So anything, if you ever make any changes here, you want to make sure you hit save. Um, and well, the one thing that I noticed there is it looks like the new ones are not in those calc bases in terms of what's on that list that comes through. So that's something that we'll fix. We're going to get all those calc bases on that list. And that's really just for reference. It's still available for the calculations. The one other piece here I wanted to mention in relation to this is for our starting model templates, which are down here. So you can build these starting model templates, and they can be whatever you want. And you can apply packages to these that will be automatically turned on. So if we go into this garage 20 by 4 by 24 by 24 starting model, if you have specific things for like this garage 24 by 24 that are add-ons that you want to include always with this starting model and have those checked on, you can come in here to your materials and, you know, I'm not sure which one of these might make sense here, but you could turn anything on. Like maybe you have a starting model that's interior liner. And so you could have this turned on as part of your uh, starting model. And if I save the starting model here from the distributor side where you can set up these templates, and then when we go back to our my dashboard of jobs and we go to the garage 24 by 24, then we'll see that this package is automatically turned on for this particular starting model. So just something to keep in mind, um, you can set up your packages in your starting model so they can just come in automatically. You don't always have to turn all these off and on if you, if you don't want to. Anytime you do a brand new job, all these will be checked off. Anything you have as a base macro, like we talked about, is automatically going to come in with a starting or a brand new model. The default is always going to be off for all these add-ons. But you can come into a starting model and you can check those on if you want to have those automatically be turned on. Um, I think that's everything really for the packages I wanted to cover. I think maybe we'll do a separate thing here for the bundles and the options. This is another type of package that you can use. Um, and I guess maybe real quick, I can show you, if you haven't seen these, with an option, it gives you this choice of having this displayed like to an end user. And you can put these on your sales contracts and outputs to show them, here's the material total right now. Here, if you want to add this optional workbench, this is how much it would cost you. It's not part of this total price at the moment, just letting you know this is how much it cost. But if they do want to turn it on, if they say, yeah, I want to include a workbench in my job, you click this button, and now this is become like a bundle, we call a bundle, and it's part of the total price of the job now. It's no longer an option. Um, I have a bundle here. Bundles work similar to the option, except it doesn't have this option here where it's not part of the total price. Bundles are either off and on. The difference with the bundles um, from other types of add-ons is that it lists it as a single line item on um, your prices. And this can be put as part of your sales output. So anything that you want to be sort of bundled together as a sales option, you can do with these bundles. 
if I go over here to this bundle list, I do have multiple materials that I defined in that bundle, just like any package or add-on. It shows them over here, but when you present it to like the end client, it just shows this bundle. They don't really see all this information in the background. For all these other add-ons, they're not gonna show up kind of as a single line item bundle. They just get added to these different categories and they get added to the total cost. So that, that is the new stuff, that's packages, and that's the add-ons. That's how you can put those in groups, you can do those calculations, you can ask questions. Um, so now, kind of the work's on you to figure out how you wanna use those and we can help you with those. Um, I guess real quick, the other things that we did, you can now, we have a, an item for a slider trackboard cover. So this is something that you have to add to your material database and it's a trim item. And once you add it to your database, you can get a slider track cover to come in as part of the 3D model. So this will automatically come in to the material list. Um, and so over here in the finishes for sliding door, there's now this option for a slider track and you can have multiple different types of tracks here. Um, and I did have to change my header. You, this header material is like a material that goes across the top here, this trim material, which you probably don't want to see in this case. So I, you are able to change that to none. Uh, the other thing that we put in, the other big thing, is bookshelf girts. And this is kind of a phase one. And you, anybody out there who uses bookshelf girts, please uh, take a look at this and give us any feedback. Um, and the way to turn this on is now we have a style here. So we have standard and we have commercial or bookshelf girts. So when I change it to that style, then it puts it on the inside, though it is, it is coming out the front here an inch and a half in this case, just kind of based on the material that I'm using. So this may be a phase one of these. I know there's some different ways that people do commercial girts, and we might need some additional styles and some subsets of these commercial girts, but please, anybody who uses those, please take a look at those and give us some feedback, and we can, uh, we're gonna come back and do some additional work on those, I'm thinking. Okay, a uh, little bit of time here left for questions. I think that's everything that I wanted to cover at this point. Um, don't 